The equine intestinal tract is a really weird and wonderful environment. It's huge, it's anatomically very different than most other animal species. It contains liters of intestinal contents, trillions of different microorganisms like bacteria and viruses and fungi, and it's really a critical thing for horse health. Disease in the intestinal tract is a very, very common problem in horses, and it can range from colic to laminitis to diarrhea to poor growth and a whole range of other issues. And a lot of this comes down to what's going on in that local environment, namely what's happening with the bacteria that are there to help with digestion and help prevent disease from occurring. So what we wanted to do is understand what's going on in this environment. As it, it's a very complex environment with lots of bacteria we don't even have names for at this point. It's been very hard for us to understand what goes wrong and why when we haven't been able to characterize much of what's been happening there. So our research is trying to take identification of this local complex environment to the next level using DNA. So looking at parts of these microorganisms and figuring out exactly what's in the intestinal tract of a horse. How does it change in health and disease? What are some triggers that make it go bad? What are some things we can do to improve it to reduce the risk of infections and colic and laminitis and to treat things that develop? But once we understand more of what's in the normal intestinal tract of the horse, identify the bacteria that we think the horse needs to have for health and we want to have larger numbers of, obviously the next thing we want to do is figure out how to support that. How do we get more of those bacteria in there? How do we get them dominating some of the bad bacteria that can cause diarrhea or laminitis and everything else? Now probiotics have been approached that have been used for a long time, feeding them bacteria to help repopulate the intestinal tract. The problem is we haven't had much evidence that it works. And it may be because we've been putting in the wrong bugs or the wrong concentrations or various other things. And now that we can figure out more what's supposed to be in there, we can maybe figure out what bugs we want to start putting back in as probiotics. So in the past, we've known that changes in the bacterial population of the intestinal tract can be bad in a horse. They can cause diarrhea, they can lead to laminitis, they can change gas production that leads to colic. But we haven't really been able to understand that environment very well. We can culture, we can take a fecal sample and put it on a culture plate and see what bugs are there. We can only grow a really small proportion of those. And to really understand this, we need to identify everything that's happening in there. So to take this to the next level, we can now do sequence analysis of all the different microorganisms. We can take a fecal sample or intestinal sample. We can get all the little DNA snippets that are in there that represent a single bug. And we can look at those and find out what's the range of bacteria that are in there. And we now know that there are hundreds of different bacterial species, a really wide, diverse population of bacteria, including many that are really rare, obscure, or ones we don't even have names for. And it's really these rare, obscure bacteria that are probably key components of the intestinal tract, not a lot of the ones we've paid attention to in the past. So what we can do now is we can take a sample and say, okay, when a horse has diarrhea or colic or laminitis or we give it an antibiotic or change its diet, what happens to this bacterial population and how does that relate to disease? So we can maybe figure out better ways to prevent those changes from happening when they have to go on antibiotics or get stressed. Or we can figure out better ways to modify that bacterial population to prevent disease or treat disease when it occurs. So, so research like this can be really rewarding and it's also very challenging because we're getting into an area that really is, is unknown. And when you get into the unknown, you can have fun because we find lots of new things. We can get a lot of interesting evidence, but trying to figure out what that means is often the biggest challenge. Now that we've got the technology to get hundreds of thousands of these DNA snippets from bacteria, we have to figure out how to use those and how to analyze those and interpret those and make sure that the decisions that we're making are actually real. And that's maybe the biggest challenge is trying to merge the horse health with the lab equipment and the DNA molecules and the computer side that we need to bring all this together to say this fecal sample has these different bacteria and this is what that really means. So one of the bigger challenges is trying to use all this information we can get now. One of the most exciting aspects of this research is really getting into an area that we haven't known before. We've known it's a very, very important area. We know things can change and we know that really relates to disease, but we haven't been able to understand it. 
And now that we're getting into this, we can actually get some great information about what's happening in the intestinal tract, how we can prevent disease. And it raises a lot of potential to have a big impact because colic, diarrhea, laminitis are such big problems in the horse world. Well, the next step in this research is just to continue what we're doing. Now we're getting a better idea of what the normal horse is like in terms of their intestinal tract. Now we're stepping that out saying, okay, what happens when they have this problem or that problem? So once we define normal, we can define abnormal. And then once we can define abnormal, we can start figuring out how we can shift abnormal back to normal whether it's antibiotics, whether it's probiotics or other bacterial approaches, whether it's vaccination, diet, a whole range of opportunities can get opened up to figure out how to restore this intestinal tract back to its normal environment. Equine Guelph has been a big supporter of this research from the basic work we've done with specific bacteria and moving that into the broader studies looking at what's actually going on in the intestinal tract. And that's helped us move this from kind of the individual bacterium, individual disease level to this broad, let's figure out what's going on in the whole horse. And it's really been critical for us to advance. We've also been funded by the Canadian Foundation for Innovation, which is a, a big agency to supply equipment. Basically gets us the toys that let us do the work that we can do, as well as we've had grad students funded through the Ontario Veterinary College to help get the knowledge and how to use all this information. Mm -hmm.